Blade was still out there somewhere, doing what he did best. He was a weapon. His life was a war. And everybody knows the war never ends. After all the positive buzz that centered around Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, I wanted to do a more constructive thought process thinking forward into the future when it came to superhero games in general. Spider-Man for the PS4 has been a monumental success on sales, and with great success comes great opportunity. This means that Marvel had the right idea coming back into the video game market after a brief stint with licensing that pulled a lot of digital games from the storefront. The question of which particular hero will be utilized next for another AAA title remains to be seen outside of the Avengers project. I'm here today to pitch an idea, a pipe dream so to speak, about the next Marvel superhero that should take over the reins. Today we're talking about the desire for Marvel to put us into the shoes of the Daywalker, the vampire with the vengeance, Blade. Now I know what you might be thinking on the subject of anti-heroes in the Marvel Universe that could be utilized new and old. Moon Knight would be a cool idea and I think Daredevil getting a game off the ground in that magnitude could work for the blind lawyer of Hell's Kitchen. I want to beat people up and break people's arms and knock them against walls. I want to be a vigilante and Daredevil embodies this. He's basically Marvel's Batman so it would be a win-win situation. Now there's old characters that have been utilized before like Ghost Rider. Blade is probably low on people's lists but I'm gonna get to that in a minute. The Punisher has always been popular and the 2005 game on the PS2 by Volition really brought out the essence of that character. Guns galore, no mercy executions, the works. Wolverine could be the next choice on people's lists as a lot of fans, especially myself in particular, found X-Men Origins Wolverine the Uncaged Edition on the PS3 to be 10 times better than that disaster piece of a movie they put out on screen. Fox, you should be ashamed of yourself, but that's neither here nor there. However, I find it more challenging for a developer to take an established character who had more failures than success within the video game landscape and try to reinvigorate them for a modern audience, try to actually make the best game they possibly can with the source material at play. I felt that same way about some spawn games, but we're not here to talk about some burnt toes today. Let's talk about some critiques as to why Blade didn't work out in previous iterations. Blade for the PlayStation 1 was a colossal mess from all accounts. Lighting issues made that game seem way too dark than it needed to be. No racist pun intended. Controls really didn't align well with your actions and the overpower opponents that could take Blade out in a few bullets felt like playing Contra a terrible 3D version of Contra that shouldn't exist to begin with. Fast forward to Blade 2 on the PS2, Del Toro made a solid follow up in the theaters. However, the game didn't transition well on quality. It doesn't hold the same weight. It might be slightly better than the first Blade game with the interesting idea to do this rise to honor attack system with the analog stick attacking in all angles, but it is still a weak product. Nothing interesting about the plot, combat, or gameplay. It's nothing more than a repetitive of chore. All of that sounds pretty awful, right? I think what a new Blade game needs is a fresh slate. No movie tie-in madness or Activision fucking up the brand anymore. They should start on a new original premise, much like Spider-Man on the PS4 did to flesh out original tales and concepts. The formula should be hack and slash. Say what you will about Ghost Rider on the PS2, but everyone will tell you that Blade was one of the best unlockables in that game, which was was an aforementioned God of War clone. So what would be the important elements of a Blade game 
to do that character justice. The movies highlighted this decrepit horrific atmosphere of vampires wanting to enslave humanity. In the comics, vampires clearly come in different sects and ranks. The underlying theme is that the vampire world works in mysterious ways that could threaten the very nature of all life on earth, including other vampires in more evolved forms. While I don't disagree that the gameplay will come first before plot, I do think there are people who want to be immersed by adult storytelling. Blade is perfect and mature for this, with badass gameplay and a story to accommodate. Eric Brooks sets that up perfectly. The anti-hero tragedy. Lots of people tend to forget that while Blade is a supernatural force to be reckoned with, who has all of the strengths and barely any of the weaknesses of his kind sans feeding, he's still cursed by his lineage. His mother was fed on and killed by Deacon Frost while he was still in the womb. Eric didn't have a choice in the matter. He was literally forced to become half vampire. He even starts to see that romantic entanglements will never guarantee a normal life as the daywalker. In certain instances, Blade was forced to kill the woman he loved who either got turned by the vampires or they set him up in some elaborate ruse or the personal people around him got set up as well just to get closer to Blade. I think expanding on that dynamic of hate and sacrifice all while setting up Dracula, the originator behind the vampire strain as the big bad, will lead to some interesting parallels between the quarrels of the vampire under world and the humans. They're so different yet similar to each other in selfless acts. The gameplay for a hack and slash has to be fine tuned as humanly possible. Blade had a string of basic combos in Ghost Rider but they weren't varied enough in comparison. This means that the problematic nature of previous Blade games would have to be amended, especially pertaining to the lackluster moves and terrible controls. It's not a hack and slash without mentioning the foundation that Devil May Cry laid out in terms of getting it right. Previous Blade games allowed the player to toggle the handguns for use, but fuck that. Devil May Cry brought in concepts of using a sword, juggling an enemy immediately with two pistols, and attacking him with the sword again. Free flow and combo potential is the name of the game here, so imagine throwing a sword to a vampire while Blade's hilt cuts off their hands in mid-combo. Is that sort of visceral gory edge that will give the combat some pretty gruesome results. Blade has a laundry list of weapons, glaives, EDTA serum which could be used to disrupt the blood and make vampires explode as you saw in the Blade movies, the Daywalker sword, guns, silver bullets, stakes, hand to hand, knives, onions, garlic, the works. Pretty much anything that can kill a vampire, Blade can use it. I wouldn't mind larger enemies with special kill animations like werewolves or bosses equivalent to the sympathetic vampire in the comics Michael Morbius, or maybe I just want a final showdown where I bash in Dracula's face. If it's one thing they should keep is how vampires just explode into flames when killed. That was some grade A stuff in the movies, nice special effects. I also think the street were a big component of the Blade movies. In the comics, they had backwater bayous. I believe the level design should have mostly a wide linear format, with Blade being able to traverse and maximizing environmental potential with air combos and hack and slash variety that keeps you on your toes when completing objectives. Devil May Cry 5 has a large space now compared to DMC4, so I would like to see something to that effect. I also think that Blade's weakness with feasting should lead to a bad ending if you utilize feasting for the entire game. Blade's principle is to not become what he hates, so maybe that could be a gameplay mechanic. Maybe you'll have the option between feasting and blood serum, which is the only way to give you health and enhance certain abilities. Feasting is mostly about offensive maneuvers, so you could either feast on someone and maybe you'll have iframes, or you could take the serum and Blade will get a boost in defense. The serum ending gives you the good ending and the bad ending 
has it where Blade sides with Dracula and lets the feast consume him. I guess we could say in some elaborate twist, Dracula uses Blade to become a daywalker and then he ends up exterminating humanity. It's equivalent to a system that was implemented in Dark Watch by High Moon Studios. You can actively choose between becoming a hero or succumbing to murderous bloodlust. We also saw this done in the infamous series by Sucker Punch. Various decisions affected you over the course of the game so you could become the character you desire to be. And that goes double for Blade. A game is only as important as who is helming the project, so Blade should get the same top-notch treatment as Spider-Man, a triple-A project. As for developers who I think it would be cool to see on this project, I think Sony Santa Monica could take over the reins. The Santa Monica crew would be out of their element working on a comic book game of this nature. However, it would have to be reminiscent of the older God of War playstyles as a foundation. Platinum game would also be a great choice but if the publisher gives them an ample amount of time to work on the game that would be the best course of action I hate when platinum games works on a project and then they get gimped and then the development time goes to trash and then they put out a half-assed product give them all the time you need for them to make a great experience and I'm sure it will go well just don't make it a rush job like the Ninja Turtles game was and I think everything would be a-okay. Anyway, this is Renegade Operative signing off. What did you guys think of the video? Comment below, let me know, and what will be your favorite anti-hero from the Marvel Universe to see in a video game? Sound off with your ideas, and once again, take care, like, share, and subscribe, and don't let the thirst consume you. See you later.